Moving right along, students, we are up to chapter 22, Romanticism, which was the late 18th and early 19th century art movement. It's really exciting paintings are in this group with some really amazing artists, um, not the least of which is this guy, Jericho. These are some French names, G-E-R-I-C-A-U-L-T is pronounced Jericho. And this painting is entitled Wrath of the Medusa. It's in your text on page 398. The uh, zeitgeist of this particular time had art that was based on strong emotions, um, subjective sensibilities, and imagination, and frequently based on actual events that were being interpreted by the artist. This is an actual event that took place. Um, it was extremely controversial at the time. It was in the news, and it created uh, a, a situation that was addressed by uh, several people, especially by the artist Jericho. It was about a real story of a frigate that was taking some settlers uh, to Senegal, and there was a uh, and it was a very bad uh, journey, and weather wasn't helpful, and as a result, there was a problem with the ship breaking up, and uh, many people lost their lives. The crew and the captain took the lifeboats to, for themselves, and a number of people existed on broken parts of the ship that had been um, broken apart. We see the moment at which there's a little tiny, and this is what I love about this painting, the focal point actually, as I've explained before to students, does not have to be the brightest thing, the largest thing, or the thing right in the center. It can be something else. And the focal point here is almost indistinguishable, but you can see it right there. It's this tiny ship on the horizon. Just as the ship was spotted, um, we see this moment of drama. There were 12 people that survived. I think the number was 12, uh, this incident. And so there were actual survivors that could tell the full story. It was a tragic story that resulted in uh, death, which I've already stated, but in um, cannibalism for some of the survivors to have survived. We see a father and son over here on this side of the raft. Um, obviously this one has already deceased. But notice again, from this time of period, the strong diagonal, this actually going up and, and to a point there with the mast and the sail and so on. And so it's offset with another triangle on this side as these uh, men are trying to uh, make attention over there so they can come and be rescued. Um, one of the interesting things about this painting is that the artist actually, uh, first of all, he interviewed survivors and to get as much information as he possibly could. Beyond that, he uh, had models come in to his studio. He built a raft to specifications, the size that it was um, noted to be, and he drew figures and then ultimately painted them from different models who were posed in, a, in, in this particular uh, arrangement. It's a powerful painting, it hangs in the Louvre. It's quite large, I don't think I have the exact dimensions, but it's an enormous painting, as are most of these, many of these, I should say probably, um, paintings from Romanticism. On page 398, Raft of the Medusa by Jericho. Painting, another French artist, Delacroix, D-E-L-A-C-R-O-I-X, Delacroix. On page 400, you'll find this image, Massacre at Chios. This is another very moving painting um, by Delacroix. Historical fact, these people um, were uh, leaving their home uh, in Greece and trying to find rescue and safety. And you can see that it's a moment when they are being apprehended. Um, it's very powerful, emotionally moving, as is romanticism. You know, romanticism is all about you know, the complexity of the human uh, uh, condition. A very a beautiful uh, rendition of this mother whose child is trying to find her a nurse, even though she apparently is deceased. And we see, of course, uh, the captors here in this another very large history painting by uh, Delacroix. Nazis and Romanticism didn't necessarily happen to be involved with actual facts. In fact, uh, this one is an exception to that. And this is based on a, a poem by, by Lord Byron. The title of this piece is Death of Sardanapalus. And it talks about 
a relatively evil ruler um, who decided as things were uh, not going the way he wanted them to, that he would build a funeral pyre on which he would place himself. And prior to that, he would have all of his uh, women servants and others, even his horses, uh, slain, and then everything would be uh, burned and on fire. So again, these paintings, one of the things I don't think I mentioned, but I want to make sure you understand, is look how active this is with all these curves and whatever. Movement is what that's all about, that principle. As we look at something and we look and these, these, uh, these curves are taking us from one place to another. Also with repetition of the reds and all that sort of stuff. So you can look at this painting for a very long time. It's also in the Louvre Museum in Paris. Another Delacroix, a very important painting. You've probably seen this before. It's, it's, a, it's an important art history piece. This is Liberty Leading the People. It's about the French Revolution. And we see uh, the different ages uh, represented here. Uh, if you've ever seen Les Mis, and I hope that you have, it's a wonderful musical. You can probably recognize the scene. In fact, uh, in the film version that I saw, and I think a stage version I saw also, they actually built this out of real actors and actresses in a scene that was a, sort of the dunamant of the, of the show. Um, we see a youth here carrying uh, guns, and of course Lady Liberty here in the center. Actually, uh, when I was in Paris two springs ago, there was a Delacroix show at the Louvre, and it was quite powerful, and I don't think I'd seen this live and in person before. Of course, it's always best to see things live and in person. Uh, one thing I don't want you to miss, however, um, because you've missed it, it's sad to say, we have Notre Dame here in the background, uh, which as I'm sure you know, sustained serious damage uh, last year and perhaps will never be the same. But it's a, it was a real tragedy and uh, I cried a lot. Okay, so that's it for Delacroix, okay? Three of them, Massacre Kios, Death Sardinopolis, Liberty of the People. Page 400, 401, 402. Uh, this compelling painting is uh, not by a French artist, but a Spanish artist instead. It's by the artist Goya, G-O-Y-A. The title of this painting is May 3rd, 1808. And what it is showing here is the execution of uh, some people who had not supported the Napoleon approach to things. And as you can see here, um, it is quite gruesome as well as incredibly powerful. The, uh, the person who is next to be executed is, no coincidence, in sort of a crucifixion kind of position. And he's illuminated by this uh, gas lantern that's here in the center. Well, not the center, it's quite off-center. Um, and you can see that there have been quite a number of previous casualties in that. This is, uh, as we take a look at paintings that have really strong meaning, be it Guernica or May 3rd, 1808, uh, artists when they're preparing to take us to a place that um, we probably need to be aware of. Um, it's, uh, it's, something, uh, it's something that truly matters. This is Goya, page 404 in your textbook.